marketing, prospecting, social media, and now digital marketing. So many buzzwords, so much to do. It's very easy to get overwhelmed, confused, and you're not alone if you are feeling fearful about where to go and what to do next. Digital marketing turned my business around at a time when my rent roll growth was stagnant, my finances were under unbelievable duress, and I was seriously contemplating giving it all up and going back to work for someone else. Before we dive in, have you heard about the PM Collective hosted by Ashley Goodchild? It's a must listen podcast if you are in the property management industry. I've added it to my weekly playlist and I can't recommend it enough. Ashley explores the major issues in the property management industry and brings together experts and real PMs from all over Australia to share their stories. Like the awkward conversation about pay rises or how so many people just seem to fall into property management and raising the bar in property management. Now, I personally love those topics so much. So be sure to download the PM Collective wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Property Management Podcast. I'm your host, Kylie Walker, AKA That Property Mum. Now, I'm going to hit you right between the eyes in this episode and share with you the steps that I took to turn my business around and start a new business using a particular digital marketing strategy. And it's not my own strategy. I am not that smart, but I took the strategies from the most successful online marketers and entrepreneurs and used the bits relevant to real estate and property management. And to my surprise, it actually worked. So if you're ready to learn the exact strategy that I use to turn my business around, then listen up. But first, let me tell you where I was before I implemented this digital marketing strategy. So I hit a point where literally there was no managements coming in. This was the end of 2018 or maybe early 19. And I was losing managements. The sales market had slowed right down as well. But guess what kept increasing? Yep, you guessed it, the bills and expenses. I was really struggling financially and really needed to boost my cash flow big time. So I looked at my marketing because honestly, marketing really is the key to growing any business, not just a property management business. Now, my traditional marketing was going okay, although it probably wasn't as consistent as it needed to be. I had letters going out regularly. I had flyers. I was asking existing landlords for referrals and I was working with the sales team as well. But I asked myself, what more can I do? What is new? What is different right now to a few years ago? And I realized there was a whole new world of marketing that I knew very little about, but I knew I had to learn more about it. And that was digital marketing. And let me just share with you a little backstory. I actually love marketing and it was part of my early career. Um, I was an international marketing manager for a large accounting firm in Hong Kong. I moved there when I was 21 for an adventure and ended up staying for four years and I had some pretty cool jobs, but I'll save that for another episode. And how I got that job so young is completely beyond me. But anyway, I loved it and I was very good at it. And I remember this, and also remember, this was marketing before the internet. Can you actually believe that? Yep, I am really that old. I was working in corporate before there was internet. And I had to actually convince my boss at the time back in 1995, why our business needed the World Wide Web, as it was originally called. Anyway, my point here is that I'm a marketer but I hadn't kept up with the times and my business was suffering because of it. I took a deep dive into online marketing and started to educate myself. I followed as many experts as I could, Amy Porterfield, Russell Brunson, Brendan Bruchard, to name a few, and learnt what were they doing. And even though they aren't in real estate or the property management space, the principles of digital marketing are universal and they apply across almost every service or product based business globally. 
So digital marketing or online marketing basically refers to advertising and marketing delivered through digital channels to promote brands and connect potential customers using the internet or other forms of digital communication, such as search engines or websites or emails. So let me break down my digital marketing formula for you. So all digital marketing starts with SEO or search engine optimization. And if you'd like a deep dive into this, then check out episode two of the property management podcast. Now, if you can't be found online, how can anyone do business with you? And more and more of our potential clients are searching for a new property manager, for example, online. And if you aren't showing up on page one of a Google search, but your competitors are, then chances are you'll be missing out on a lot of leads and new business. Now your website developer will be able to set up your website for SEO optimization, but writing and posting regular blogs are also a great way to boost your SEO without the huge expense. So once a potential lead or client has found you online, the next thing they're going to do is check out your website which these days is essentially your online business card. But a website shouldn't be a set and forget. Look for ways to encourage visitors to your website to interact or connect with you further. What we really want is for visitors to leave their contact details so that we can start building our email list or database. Now, traditionally, we'd ask visitors to subscribe to a newsletter, but that's not the only way to get their details. You can get way more creative than that with a pop-up offering a free property report or appraisal or a lead magnet like an investor report in exchange for their details. And I'll dive into lead magnets a little bit later, so stay with me here. Now, your website needs to be set up with a few key elements as well, including, very importantly, a call to action on the first page like your phone number or an email link also needs to outline what services you provide, uh, your location, uh, try putting an opt-in offer like an appraisal request, and it also also should have some social proof. And of course, be super easy to navigate. It needs to demonstrate that trust and expertise from the get-go. Forget all the fluff. Uh, And super important, it also needs to be optimized for mobile since 90% of people access the internet via their mobile phones. Now, websites are also important because you own it. Meta or Mark Zuckerberg or whoever owns Facebook and Instagram these days, they own your social media platforms and they could be gone tomorrow along with all of your followers and your content. Now, following a stalk of your website, a potential new client is going to want social proof. Just like when you want to try a new restaurant or an Airbnb, your lead will do the same thing and check out the reviews. Now, a lot of websites have their Google reviews feeding into their website these days, which is great because the lead then doesn't have to leave your website. But some people still don't trust that and they'll want to do they want to get external or third party validation. So they'll head on over to your Google reviews. And the more you have, the better. Make sure that you have a selection of tenant and landlord and sales ones as well if you're a sales agency. And don't worry about the occasional bad review. It makes you look more authentic and no one is perfect 100% of the time. Start worrying though if you're getting them consistently because your star rating will start to go down and you really don't want that. Let me tell you, I went hard out accumulating Google reviews before a lot of others had cottoned on to their importance. At one stage, my real estate business was the most reviewed in both office locations and it exploded my lead generation and rent roll growth at the time. Even now, a lot of leads that I speak to have followed or new clients have followed the journey that I've just outlined to you. They Google for a new property manager, they check out the website, and then the Google reviews. So start asking your new leads, how did they find you? And if you're not following this strategy, I can guarantee you'll be missing out on a lot of leads. Now, let's talk about social media as part of your digital marketing journey as well. You absolutely must be set up on social media platforms 
those platforms especially relevant to your ideal clients. Now, social media is not all about how many followers or likes you have. But again, it's about providing social proof and building on that no like and trust factor. I've already done a couple of episodes on social media. So go back and take a listen to those if you want a deeper dive into the ins and outs. But the content you are posting on social media is critical. You need to have a delicate balance and I call it the three P's of posting, people, property and personality. You want to show your people or the people that you work with through your client testimonials. You want to showcase your properties and you want your personality to shine through. You need to be authentic and relatable and share your beliefs and values. And that ultimately is why people will want to do business with you. So the big thing with social media is it's free for anyone to set up. Whereas Facebook ads and Google ads, you have to pay for them but they are still inexpensive when you compare it to what we were spending on newspaper ads for many years. Now, I absolutely despised Facebook and Google ads for the longest time, but I've really come to appreciate the power of them since spending a lot of time understanding how to set them up and how they work. Now, Google ads are a form of search engine advertising. They appear when people search for services like property manager in your location at the top of the search results before any of the SEO optimized content or websites. Whereas Facebook and Google ads, you have to pay for. They are still inexpensive though, when you compare it to what we were spending on newspaper advertising for years. I absolutely despised Facebook and Google ads for the longest time, but I've really come to appreciate the power of them since spending a lot of time understanding how they work. Now, Google ads, are a form of search engine advertising and they appear when people search for services like property manager in your location at the top of the search results before any of the SEO optimized content or websites. So as you essentially pay for the results when people click your ad or call your business or visit your website. Facebook ads, on the other hand, will appear in your social media feeds as sponsored content. The beauty of Facebook ads is that you can expose your brand to audiences you never previously would have been able to get in front of. Check out last week's episode where I actually break down the good, the bad, the ugly of Facebook ads for you. One final element of digital marketing strategy is content marketing, lead magnets and nurture. And if you are zoning out right now, come back to me. I get it. There's a lot more to this digital caper than a flashy website, right? Now, content marketing. It is basically sharing information online that your ideal leads or clients are interested in. This might be educational, inspirational, motivational, or just plain honest and authentic content, or maybe it's a combination of all of the above. So many successful online marketers have been using this as part of their digital marketing strategy for years. Guess what? We can too. Start with a monthly or weekly blog or video and go from there. The key to content marketing though is consistency and relevancy. You need to build it into your marketing strategy and it's not a short-term strategy either. It gains momentum and a life of its own the longer you are doing it. It also needs to be valuable content to your ideal clients. It's a great way to build that trust and expertise that I've been harping on about. Lead magnets, well, they are basically pieces of content that you can share with your audience in exchange for contact contact information, like an investor report or a guide to maximizing the rental income on your investment or understanding your legislation guide. There are so many options. And you can also use these as part of your Facebook ad campaigns as well. Now, nurture emails, or you can even have nurture SMSs. The important clincher, if you like, to the lead magnet is to then continue to nurture the lead with the goal of turning them into a paying client. Have you ever gone to buy something online and then got to the checkout and changed your mind? Then a string of emails all of a sudden show up in your inbox selling you the benefits of the product or service that you almost purchased. You start feeling like it's a sign from the universe and eventually you purchase the damn thing. 
That is the power of a nurture email. Even though a lot of people think emails are just spam or dead, let me tell you they are not. If you deliver relevant content that will actually help your potential lead uh, and you are sharing with them something that they need to know, learn or experience, uh, nurture email campaigns can be very successful uh, as part of an online marketing strategy. And they are used by every successful online marketer on the planet. And they are essentially what can turn potential leads into paying client. Now you can also apply the nurture strategy to an SMS format as well. So there you have it, a digital marketing strategy all laid out for you. Now, if that all seems a little overwhelming and confusing, then I invite you to join my upcoming free online workshop where I'll break down digital marketing for you so that you'll be able to grow your personal brand, boost your business profile and grow your property management business and rent roll. Now there'll be a link in the show notes and I would love to see you there. I also have recently launched a done for you social media management service as well. So there will be a link to that service as well in the show notes. Now, if you enjoyed this episode and you know someone else who really needs to hear this content, I'd be super grateful if you would share it with them. My mission is to help other business owners, property managers and BDMs find an easier way to do property management without the stress and overwhelm. If you love the property management podcast, you've got to check out the PM Collective hosted by my friend, Ashley Goodchild. She discusses things like how to have awkward conversations about pay rises, um, yes please, how to raise the bar in property management and why so many people just seem to fall into the industry. You've got to love stories like that. She'll leave you with great advice, actionable steps to take and let you know that you're not alone in any of the challenges that you face. So be sure to check out the PM Collective wherever you get your podcasts.